I work in the leasing office at a property in Texas. I also live on site. We have about 400 apartments and take up two sides of a street. I live across the street in the very back and try to keep to myself. I, I do not like for residents to know that I live there. About two months in, a woman and her grown sons lease an apartment with us. The sons are twins, one is special needs, and the other is, well, different. He has a very active imagination, and is very focused on sex. Almost immediately after they moved in, things started getting weird. One day, I was crossing the street after work to go home. As soon as I reached the other sidewalk... I hear a voice call out, Hey, Raquel. I turned towards the voice, which I realized was coming from the bus stop at the end of the street. I didn't recognize who it was until I got a little closer. We meet face to face and then I realized who it was from when he moved in. I knew he was a little weird, so I was trying to keep my distance while still being polite. He's easy to piss off and I don't know what he's capable of. But I don't want to make him think that there's anything behind the polite hello. He starts telling me that I look just like his baby mama who lives in North Texas. Then jumps to a different subject about how he had just ran all the way from downtown to here. And then decides to tell me his entire family history. Naming all of his cousins and homeboys. Rambling on and on about essentially nothing. I haven't said anything other than oh, aha uh -huh, and okay at this point. I keep taking steps backwards to indicate that I'm trying to leave, but he keeps talking and moving closer to me. As I'm trying to leave, I notice that he has a huge boner. He was wearing basketball shorts, as always, so it was pretty difficult to hide. This really creeps me out, and somehow I managed to get away from him. He sat at the bus stop staring at me as I walked away, and I didn't want him to know that I lived there, so... I just kept walking down the street to make it look like I lived elsewhere. Every now and then, I would see him around the property, or he would come to the office and talk to me, and it was really uncomfortable. The leasing office had a hallway leading to the manager's office, the copier, and the package room. There was a door in it too, which came in handy quite a bit. His visits got to the point where, every time I saw him walking up to the office, I would run and hide in the back and let the other staff deal with him. He wasn't creepy towards them, and they knew the situation, so it was cool. Cut to December, though. Our office was being remodeled, so we were using our business center as a temporary workspace. It is only one room, and there's only one way in or out, and no place to hide. I was alone in the office one day, and who should come walking in but my worst nightmare? He needed to borrow our copy of his mail key because he misplaced his, or didn't have one, or whatever. We have to take an ID in order to release the keys, and he didn't have his, so we had to go to his apartment, get the ID, and come back. We have to take an ID in order to release the keys, and he didn't have his, so he had to go to his apartment, get the ID, and come back. In the time that he was gone, I set up my phone on my co-worker's desk and started recording video in case anything went down, just so that I would have evidence in case. He noticed the tattoo on my shoulder and commented on asking, Hey, um, is that your name? Or, why in the hell would I have my own name tattooed on myself? I tell him that it's my grandmother's name, which sends him into this whole spiel about how he has his grandmother's name tattooed on him, and he is an artist and he draws people's faces and such. He leaves to go check his mail, then returns a few minutes later. However, when he returns, he has added something to his ensemble. He now has a pencil behind his ear. I suppose it was there to make him look more like an artist. But then he said that he was going to draw my face. But I have to send him a picture so that he can look at the image of me. He said that he would draw me and bring the picture to the office later that week. Which, by the way, I never sent him that pic. Months go by and no picture. I was walking through the pool to go walk an apartment and he catches me in the pool area. Crap, no escape. He presents me with, well, I don't really know what to call it. It's me, or I guess how he sees me at least. The picture was drawn on lined notebook paper in pen and looked like he threw it together in three minutes. 
He drew me black. I'm white, wearing a short, tight dress. Not something I would wear, ever. Legs two different sizes, carrying a purse with Texas on it. That's not an item I own. It was really creepy. Upon closer inspection of said drawing, I noticed that he drew nipples on it under the dress. At first I wondered if he'd originally drawn me naked. The next day, I talked to the maintenance man about it. He says that he did originally draw it naked, but decided to put clothes on it because giving it to me would look too forward. Another day, I was walking out of one of the pool gates and he was walking in through another. I saw him out of my peripherals, but didn't acknowledge him because, well, you get it. He says to me, hey, Raquel, twice, in a very low voice. I am hard of hearing, so I can get away with pretending that I didn't hear someone. But apparently, this made him angry. The reason I know all this is because he talks to one of our maintenance staff about me regularly. That person relays the weird, creepy, delusional crap that he says about me. According to him, I was really rude, and he don't play that, were his words. The next few times I saw him, he had this deranged look on his eyes, like he was disgusted by me. And it also kind of looked like he wanted to hurt me. Well, a few weeks go by, and he apparently gets over being mad at me, and resumes being the creepiest man alive. The maintenance man tells me that he claimed to have met my boyfriend and that he's a cool dude so he's going to back off. I asked my boyfriend if he had ever met him and he says no. The maintenance man tells me that he claims to have met my parents when they stopped in for a visit and they were really nice too, cool people. I also asked my parents if they had spoken to him or saw him but they also said no. I don't know when or how he could have met them or even saw them. I never saw him around when they were here. And I have confirmed from multiple different people that were there that he was nowhere around. Was he hiding in the bushes? Recently, I decided to use our fitness center late at night. The fitness center has these big windows that overlook the second pool on my side of the property. While I'm on the treadmill, which is in front of one of these windows, he appears, and he's just staring at me through the glass, waving at me, watching me. I pretend that there is a glare on the window and that I didn't see him, and he disappears into the dark shadows in the pool area, and I continue my workout. The next day, the maintenance man tells me that he talked to our friend, and he could not stop talking about how he saw me in the fitness center. He went into detail about what I was wearing, how form-fitting it was, how sweaty I was, everything. Just overall, really creepy stuff that gave me the chills. So, I avoid the fitness center and use my real gym to avoid seeing him again. A few days go by and my informant, the maintenance man, tells me that my stalker was wondering why I stopped going to the gym. Apparently, ever since that night, he had been returning to the pool around the same time to wait for me, so that he could watch me work out again. What the heck? He starts to show up at the office more frequently, and I have to avoid him. On Friday, he is sitting in the pool area by the office, directly behind where my desk is. There's a huge window behind me, so you can tell. I turn to get something out of my cabinet, and catch him staring at me. He waved and I flash a nervous peace sign and then proceed with my business. And he's not in swimwear but fully dressed. He has his notebook with him and is frantically drawing something. I think to myself, great, here comes another picture of me, but this time in workout clothes. My co-worker went to pull up the golf cart and close the cabana. She has to go through the pool area to do this so she got a glimpse of what he was drawing. It was a cross, with my name going down the middle of it. According to him, I asked him to draw a tattoo for me. And so, that's what he was doing. Drawing a tattoo, for me, that has my own name on it. It was bad enough that it was a cross, but with my name? Well, apparently, he said he was going to give it to me the next day. But, the next day, he didn't show up. 
Two weeks pass, and I think that maybe he isn't going to give me the drawing. And enough time had passed at this point that I thought he had given up, and that I could use the fitness center again. My friend and I go in around 8pm, and we didn't see any signs of him, so we go ahead with our workout. I was flipping over to do leg raises on my right side, which causes me to face the door. And chills engulf my entire existence, and my heart stops for a second. He is standing directly across the street, on the phone, staring at me through the door. I start to panic and find a place to hide from view. Peeking around the corner, I see him turn and walk through the outside hallway behind the leasing office. Hoping that he wouldn't come back for a while, we continue our workout. I keep glancing out of the windows every few seconds to make sure he isn't there. And he reappears, still talking on the phone. But this time, he starts pacing around the fitness center very slowly, looking through the windows with this creepy side glance like I wouldn't be able to see him creeping. I keep trying to hide from view and I'm waiting for an opportunity to get the hell out of there. I'm hiding in a corner and he walks up to the locked door and knocks on it. He continues to knock for a solid three minutes and then finally leaves. He walks down the street a little way, and I take that chance to run back to my apartment as fast as I can. Today, my informant tells me that Stalker said that I wouldn't let him into the fitness center for a drink of water. Apparently, he said that he had been on a run and just wanted some water, but I wouldn't let him in. But then he switched up his story and said that he was just trying to give me the drawing of the tattoo that I had asked him for. Well, I know for a fact that he didn't run from anywhere. He was wearing flip-flops. Secondly, he had been standing still for a good 30 minutes before coming to the fitness center. And he had gone back to his apartment where there is water. So why the hell would he go all the way to the fitness center for water? And three, he didn't have the drawing with him. From what I could tell, he didn't have any pockets on what he was wearing. And it wasn't in his hands. He also claims to have talked to my neighbor that lives across from me and said that I'm a weird and crazy girl, and that he should stay away from me. And that shook me to my core, because if that is true, then he knows where I live. This happened a few years back in a mountain suburb of Vancouver, Canada. This really happened, although I wish it didn't. My aunt had just purchased a beautiful old home in this neighborhood, but being a business executive, she often traveled around Canada for work purposes. Her two children were at her dad's home for an extended period, and their live-in nanny went back to her home abroad for a much-deserved break. And so, my aunt asked if I could house it, as the large home would be unoccupied, and she felt uncomfortable with that. I agreed to this, thinking that it would be a small weekend break where I could lounge around and raid their fridge. The drive was about one and a half hours from my place, and I was generally eager about the whole thing. The nanny, who we were all very close to, and who was like a second mother to my younger cousins, warned me before leaving that she thought that the house was haunted. The country where she is from, the Philippines, has strong beliefs about the paranormal and ghosts, and said that she routinely saw a woman dressed in Victorian clothing by the outdoor pool. She told me to do some special prayers for protection or something, and being a believer in the paranormal and experiencing a few things myself in unrelated incidences, I actually took her pretty seriously and was a little bit frightened. But I figured at this point that it was too late to back out now. So she left and I settled into the home. The first few hours were pretty uneventful. I just watched some TV, browsed the internet and read some of their tabletop magazines. Eventually, I sort of forgot about what she said about the haunting. I ate dinner, took a brief swim and then things started to get a bit weird. I had that familiar feeling of being watched like most people report when speaking of the paranormal. I tried my best just to shrug it off, 
and realised that I had forgotten an extra towel outside on one of the patio chairs back when I was swimming. When I went outdoors, the towel was floating in the middle of the pool. This freaked me out a bit, but I forced myself to calm down, thinking that maybe the wind blew it or something, and watched some TV, hoping that it would distract me. I was watching reruns of my so-called life when the faucet in the kitchen began to pour out water. I went to turn it off quickly and noticed that a single plate lay in the center of the floor face down. I put it away and nervously go back to the TV room but sit in the corner with my back facing the wall because I was growing scared and I didn't want something to sneak up from behind me like in a horror movie. From where I was sitting, you could see the outdoor pool through a glass wall screen. After about half an hour, I noticed that the water was sort of bubbling. I went to the glass door to investigate and saw that it appeared that the water was moving as if someone were doing quick laps back and forth. But there was no audible splash sounds to accompany the movement. I also got an overwhelming sense of dread and goosebumps formed on my arms and on the back of my neck. Well, I turned off the TV, made sure all the doors were locked, and sprinted upstairs to the master bedroom. I curled up under the covers and started reciting the prayers the nanny taught me before she had left. I must have stayed awake for hours, long after the sun had set, trying to will myself to sleep. I had left the lights in the room on because I was just too frightened. As I closed my eyes and tried to calm down, I heard a piercing scream that seemed to come from the outside window. And then the light turned off, leaving me in the darkness. At this point, I'm having a heart attack, but I am too scared to move. And all of a sudden, the locked windows start to flap open and shut forcefully. They were the ones that had panes that opened outwards, if that makes sense. Also, at the same time, the thick heavy wooden doors in the hallway leading up to the bedroom began to do the same causing loud banging and I felt as if the whole house was shaking. These doors would not have been moved by a strong gust of wind. They could only be moved by a forceful movement of a hand or something. Also, the opening and closing of the doors and the windows were all synchronized perfectly. After about five minutes, everything just stopped and the silence was almost deafening. All I could hear was my stifled but heavy breath. And then, I heard a sound that sent shivers down my whole body. The glass screen door on the first floor slid open and then shut. There were slow, methodical steps coming through the TV room and then up the stairs. It was as if each step were taken with intention, loud enough to knowingly scare me. Then the first door opened in the hallway, and then the other, and finally, the bedroom door creaked open. I shut my eyes tightly and listened to the footsteps as they approached the side of my bed. I felt as if a pair of eyes were piercing through the covers at me. Then the footsteps moved to the foot of my bed. Minutes passed and the presence in the air in the room was so heavy. And strangely, not one sound could be heard from outside. Not even the crickets that often frequented my aunt's backyard could be heard. Then, all of a sudden, all of the covers flew off of me. I heard a loud cackle, like something you would hear out of a cartoon witch. Well, I bolted up, packed my stuff and left the house as quickly as I could, only stopping to lock the front door as the key slipped over and over in my shaking hands. I was so desperate to get out that I left the screen door unlocked, but figured that no one would get in anyways as there was a big fence surrounding the backyard. And frankly, in that moment, it wasn't my top priority at all. I checked into the closet hotel, too scared to drive home, and spent a sleepless night there, calling my aunt in the morning. She seemed confused when I told her what had happened, as she said that she had never felt any ghostly presence there, but that the nanny had mentioned it a few times before. I guess that she just never really took it too seriously. She lived in the house for a couple of years after that, and ended up relocating to Shanghai with her children for business purposes. We didn't really speak about it much, but when I told my mother, she said that she had always felt creeped out there and told me that once, while she was swimming, she felt as if someone tried to push her head underwater. After that day, I always avoided that house, coming over only when necessary 
and when others were inside.